let's just take a, a hard turn. I don't know if you guys remember the the debate that we had with this guy Jason Hinkle. He Jackson Jackson Hinkle. Sorry, um, he is um, he he. He billed himself as a communist, a patriot communist. Was that what it was? Socialist patriot or something like that. Uh, he had Marxist Leninist in the bio. Oh, wait, that's what it was. Marxist Leninist that patriot. That disappeared quickly. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, shortly after our debate, I'm not sure that that's why, um, a lot of people uh, said, you know, that something went awry with him. Uh, and. Uh, I mean, I, I would argue that there was something awry even before then. But um, uh, he was very, very upset that I was okay with a 12% increase in a budget for the State Department. Incidentally, the attrition of diplomats during the Trump years was huge. Uh, certainly, there are some programs the State Department runs that are like essentially like CIA adjacent uh, which I have problems with. But I also do believe that we need a State Department because um, it is often a State Department that will uh, help us avoid a war. Um, generally, they're less powerful than the, the Defense Department. But it's uh, supposed to be a vehicle for diplomacy, at least in like and, in the, the and, I don't know. And that's the vast majority of its mission. Right. But apparently that was a... Um, a, a real problem because I guess he was anti-imperialist, but I guess that also ultimately means you just you're okay with other people starting wars. Oh, look Very at him! Odd. He fits right in, really, it's right? A little like, campus, yeah. But he looks so, like every other Republican guest so they've had on. In in part of the sort of like a uh, clique of of folks uh who go on to uh tucker carlson's show generally we don't follow it too too much i mean i know folks like uh, glenn greenwald go on uh well tucker all over fox on on a daily basis uh and uh folks like uh jimmy Dore and this and that uh, uh, tucker i think likes to promote certain p people who at least uh n you know self-identify as being on the left uh he likes to promote them on his uh his network he likes to stir uh shit a little bit I right think you would say and generally like i don't really pay much attention to it but this one only came to my attention because this is is about as sort of like um I mean, this gets, we're getting super, super close to some full on protocols of Zion stuff here, uh, frankly. But uh, you tell me. I mean, this is an interesting uh, theory that this guy has got. Um, who I, who I've been told, like, apparently, like, five years ago was, was campaigning for Hillary Clinton. He's come, he's had quite a journey. But here, left or left. Take your side, side. But for Biden to get up there and say the single biggest threat to our country is anyone who opposes me in the coming midterm elections and the media. Oh, pause it. We should, we should set this up. They're still complaining about Joe Biden's. Um, <laughs> the dark uh, Brandon speech. The dark Brandon <laughs> speech where um, where Biden is saying that there is a problem in the Republican Party. And I don't know if people have noticed this. But there was, and the Justice Department, I don't know if they're arguing that the Justice Department, all these prosecutions of these people was, uh, of these people are uh, political uh, prisoners or something. But um, they are arguing that by going out and letting people know that there was some type of like um, fascist insurrection, that... Um, and the number of Republican lawmakers who are supportive of it is problematic. Um, that's what they don't like the fact that Joe Biden said that. I'm not saying they're trying to censor Joe Biden, but that's what they don't like. Suppress him. I'm going to take your side side. But for Biden to get up there and say the single biggest threat 
to our country is anyone who opposes me in the coming midterm elections and the media to not along makes you think we've crossed some kind of line. We have crossed the line, Tucker, and it's so interesting that, uh, you know, anyone in the media today would be saying that they liked what Joe Biden said in that speech because it was a dictator inspired speech. Not only that, but it seems like <laughs> a lot of the practices and the actions that the Biden administration is second. in. Well, let's just ruminate on what a dictator inspired speech was. What did he call for in that speech? <laughs> hmm. The aesthetics of it, though, kind of the looks scary like, lighting, Sam. Yeah, right. Don't you? Well, understand? I mean, I do think the lighting was weird, but uh, but I it was think like they, V for Vendetta. No, yeah. it's like, but no, it's like a, a a sophomore in college going through some sort of emo phase and saying, "Oh, my lighting's going to be a little red or dark this time." Oh, right? and also saying a dictator-inspired speech. But uh, go ahead. What Joe Biden said in that speech because it was a dictator-inspired speech. Not only that, but it seems like a lot of the practices and the actions that the Biden administration is employing in the United States right now that were reflected in that speech uh, are very closely aligned with what the dictator Zelensky is doing in Ukraine. Joe Biden is plunging us into a fascist state and he is taking cues from what Zelensky is doing in Ukraine to manufacture this dystopian state and this dystopian pa reality. Pause for one second. What, what is, is Zelensky he, doing? Zelensky is inspiring Joe Biden. What are the dictatorial moves that Joe Biden has done? Well, he's, he's done some unilateral moves. He's followed the Zelensky plan of relieving only $10,000 worth of debt. Basically uh, Hitler. For uh, college students um, or uh, people who have attended some uh, college, I should say, college debt. Um, I mean, haven't we been calling for him to do more unilaterally? I'm not sure exactly like what is he doing that Zelensky has inspired? I mean, aside from Zelensky also being elected, uh, but what has what? What, what what? He's trying to shoehorn Ukraine into this conversation because I guess that's where his YouTube hits Hinkles, come from. Yeah, you know, hits have been pro-Russia, right? A lot of these guys who were just doing anti-COVID stuff are really lucky that they can pose as anti-imperialists with the Ukraine stuff. Uh, you know, uh, there was about six months ago, maybe a little bit more, right around right around the start of the, the, the invasion by Russia of Ukraine. Let's just remind people of that. The bombing and the invasion and the killing and the attacking by Russia of Ukraine. Um... I spoke to someone at, uh, at YouTube because they were coming out with a new feature for, for YouTube uh, YouTubers where you could search, you could get a sense of what the difference between what people were searching for and what was being provided for. And there was a big gap in Ukraine war coverage on YouTube. And, you know, I don't really, well, I don't at all program the show that way there's only so much that we had to offer in that in terms of commentating but then you could see all of a sudden everybody once that feature came out you could see certain people immediately just shift everything when they had probably never mentioned the word ukraine or russia before on their channel it went all there because that's where the clicks were and also, if you're providing alternate coverage that diverges from the mainstream, that's perfect, right? He's filling a vacuum by saying Zelensky is the one who is the dictator and the authoritarian when, as you say, Sam, just a quick reminder, Russia invaded Ukraine, yes. not the and, other way around. And we should also be clear that, you know, when you have two sides in a conflict, uh, one side is going to seek out people who are supporting their side as much as possible um and, and, and it and makes support them it makes people feel good if they're you know inherently skeptical of the mainstream media or narratives dominant narratives to feel confident in an alternative uh narrative and that's what the hinkle's pr providing it seems like i don't follow his career i'm not an avid the dive listener but um but that's that, that that's what it seems to be right all right continue is plunging us into a fascist state and he is taking cues from what Zelensky is doing in Ukraine to manufacture this dystopian state and this dystopian reality 
in America. And there's no real surprise for me there, because at the end of the day, Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, and Joe Biden are controlled by the same exact people. They're controlled by individuals like George Soros and controlled by people like Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. And they're going to do whatever they want. Uh, you know, to put it quite simply, Zelensky is using the intelligence community in Ukraine and the Nazi Azov thugs in Ukraine to silence freedom-loving Ukrainians. And Joe Biden in the United States, though he can't remember what he had for breakfast this morning or who his wife is, his handlers and his cronies are prepping the CIA, the FBI, Antifa, the IRS, and now Ministry of Truth to attack freedom-loving Americans. Wow. <laughs> that's um a lot of names <laughs> tucker's of like usually i'd be a little more subtle yeah. for my white supremacist <laughs> audience <laughs> with uh some of the anti-jew stuff well look there's a one world uh cabal that is currently controlling uh both zelensky and biden um despite the fact that biden doesn't know where he is and uh, george soros sits atop of it and people like George Soros. And people like George Soros. You know what I mean. Um, that's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I get the feeling that, uh, that Jason's parents are pretty... Uh, Jackson. Jackson's parents are, <laughs> um, are, are feeling a little bit annoyed with their son. You recall. He's going to get a stern talking to. Well, his father uh, was mocking him openly on Twitter uh, a while back, and I guess that was the... About like a to the tooth fairy or something like that, wasn't that? Like, that no, it was no. Yes, no. I think he's he uh, claimed like uh, there was a lot of stuff that his uh, parents told him that were lies. And oh right. His father yeah. came back and said, "We never told you any of that. That's you're making that up to brand yourself. <laughs> to brand yourself." Um, but that's pretty good stuff. What's going to be interesting is to see if they ever have him back on. They may say, like, you may want to just tone it down just a little bit. Uh, we're, we're into dog whistles here, not full on, uh, you know, horn blowing. That was also you're supposed to be like a leftist. So can you do some like a little bit more leftist stuff instead of just sounding like a younger version of, uh, I don't know, uh, Mark Levin? Right, exactly. Although I will say this. Is there anybody who can deny that Joe Biden was meeting with uh, Antifa? to enlist them and part of Antifa. his like Antifa, FBI, CIA, uh, you know, group of, of, of thugs to come after Patriots, to come after Patriots, freedom loving Patriots. Um, there you have it, folks. That was that was an interesting um, that was definitely an interesting uh, 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 shift. All right. Well, we got to take.